Are you machining parts that require a spiral or trochoidal tool path in pocket machining? We can do this by using Mazatrol's face milling unit. I'm going to show you how to do this today on the Mazak Minute. Hi, welcome to the Mazak Minute. I'm Mike Zilich, part of the HEH technical team. Today's Mazak Minute, we're going to cover intelligent pocket milling. Let's get started. Intelligent pocket milling is a function that now allows us to do spiral and trochoidal tool paths inside a Mazatrol program. This gives us constant tool path uh, chip load on the tool and some people call it to it or refer to it as high-speed machining. So intelligent pocket milling and in the books you'll see that sometimes Mazak will refer to it as IPM is a machining cycle for keeping the engaged angle constant during the cutting to maintain the load to the tool. The function can be selected for the following face machining units pocket milling, pocket milling mountain, pocket milling valley, and end mill slot. Intelligent pocket milling combines a spiral path and a trochoidal path based on the shape specified by the shape sequence and the approach position to generate a tool path allowing the engaged angle to be consistent. So a lot of times what you'll see down below is you have a profile that we're machining and I like to start in the center of the pocket and with a, what will happen now is instead of it taking a straight line cut over in what we did in the past, it now will take a spiral. I can helical down into the pocket and then it will spiral out onto the part. And then once it gets into a corner, you will see, like in the, what here, you see the trochoidal tool path. It will cut and work its way into the corners. So to specify intelligent pocket machining, IPM, what we're gonna do is you would go to your pocketing unit, go to your rough tool, and cursor over to where it says type. Now under the type of the soft keys, we will see that you will see an IPM clockwise, IPM counterclockwise. I myself, I like to, if I'm inside a pocket, I like to choose counterclockwise. That way I'm climb milling as I cut. If you choose, if you still, we still have the standard features of clockwise cut, counterclockwise cut. We normally typically use those for the finish operation. So intelligent pocket milling, we chose under type, we did the IPM counterclockwise. Now the other selection that we have to make is if we come over to the width R, we're gonna specify the radial amount of cut that we wanna take with the cutter. Normally for uh, high speed machining, a lot of the tool vendors will typically recommend between five and 10% and you're gonna see that the number of flutes are gonna increase. So you see down below here, I say that a lot of times you'll see people do it with either five or nine flutes, depending on the type of material that you're cutting. So when you cursor up to the width R, there is going to be on your soft keys, there's gonna be two selections. The first one is gonna be auto set. And auto set, that will give me basically uh, a value and I believe they give me uh, half of the tool nose radius. I think they, if I hit auto set, it would give me 25 thousandths, okay? If I wanted to, I normally, uh, the suggested uh, from this tool vendor was 7%. So what you're gonna see is I'm going to enter in 35 thousandths. The other choice we have that we can also do is engage angle input. Engage angle input will define the cut amount. 
on my next slide what I have. And I, here's actually where I'm actually putting in some of my data. Okay, in the example, I'll be using a half inch end mill, a five flute end mill. So the tool manufacturer says that the starting surface feet should be 450 and the feed per tooth is going to be three thousandths and eight tenths and a radial cut of seven percent so thirty five thousandths inches per revolution so if you look at the screen down below what you see here is you're going to see that first off under type i have the ipm counterclockwise the second type right here where you see it says helical I can either do a standard entry or a helical entry. I myself, I like to do the helical. The depth of cut is going to be the full depth of cut that I'm taking minus the stock that I'm leaving. So there will be an auto set function there and that is taking, leaving the 20 thousandths on the, off of the stock removal Z. The width R, like I said, is if I hit auto set, I believe the factory has it set to being 25 thousandths or 5% of my nominal diameter. I prefer the 7 thousandths, so I overrode it and I typed in the 35. Surface feet is going to be the 450. And the feed rate rev here, that's going to be per revolution. So what I did is I took the 0 0.0038 and multiply that by five, that gives me the 19 thousandths. Go ahead and give it your coolant. And then the other choice that we had was the engage angle input, okay? I wanted to discuss it so you understand what that is. And on this slide, you'll see how you'll have down here, it's the angle of engagement, how much you want, okay? I don't see too many tool vendors tell me the percentage that they want. So that's where, again, I like to type in the actual value myself. But if we wanted to do that angle, I'm gonna come in here. We're going to hit the angle input soft key, and then I'm going to type in a value you'll notice that the angle input, the width R, notice how that is a purple 30 degrees, okay? That's showing me that that is an edge or engaged angle versus a value of what I'm doing per uh, flute there. Cursor down to the next, okay? In the first example that we're gonna be covering, is going to be a round pocket, okay? In the round pocket, you notice that you get a lot of tool path, and that's taking that 35 thousandths with a cut, and that is spiraling out, all the way out to give me that uh, three and a half inch diameter pocket. I'm gonna helically enter into it, okay? And the nice thing is, is notice that my figure pattern is very simple. I simply tell it a circle, center X, center Y, and the radius of that, okay? Some CAM packages, if I wanted to do this in EIA, um, you would notice that you would have a lot of code outputted. This is sort of really nice that if I wanted to change my width of cut, all I would have to simply do is, first off, come to my approach point, and re-question my auto sets. And then you're gonna come over here to the width R and I'm gonna change the radial amount. The next uh, example that we would cover, okay? I'm gonna show you first as I'm showing you each operation, there's three different examples. And then once the PowerPoint's complete, we're gonna actually go and go look at the control and we're gonna run these operations. In this case here, I have basically the same information on the rough tool. I have IPM counterclockwise, helical entrance, the same 35 thousandths uh, radial cut, 
And what you'll notice is that it will do spiral interpolation cuts until it works its way into the corner and then it will start doing a trichoidal cut. Down in my uh, figure pattern, I have a square and in uh, the Mazak configuration, a square can also be a rectangle. So here you're seeing that I have a basically a five inch wide pocket. You see how the X, the corner one is minus two and a half with the Y being minus one and a half. Going to the op or yeah, the opposite corner, corner three, two and a half, one and a half. And then the corner one, two, three, and four, I can put in a radius. I can put in a radius and have the 350 on each corner. Intelligent pocket milling example three. Basically what I like to do here is if I had a slot, you're gonna see that I can mill a slot with a pocket profile, but now in the figure pattern, I can also use the attribute and tell it open. So normally a tribute in a pocket, they're normally always closed. But if I open up the edges where you see the red arrows, that will allow me to have the tool start outside my pocket and work its way in. The tool path will start over on the right side and it's gonna work its way doing a trichoidal tool path the entire way. And my first example here on the control you're seeing I have a piece of material and I have that three and a half inch uh, pocket. If I come down to unit number two, I'm gonna come here to program edit and the uh, approach points, if I want to, you're gonna see I have auto set. I'm gonna go ahead and auto set those. And on the rough tool and how you can see my prompt box moving around on me, I'm gonna go ahead and pin that with this pin icon right here. So under type down below here, we have IPM counterclockwise, and you'll see down below on the soft keys, you'll, the, your selection for either one of those. My second type is gonna be, I like to use the helical approach and the width of cut, this is where you're gonna see the auto set and the engage angle input. Surface feet, feed rate per revolution. I'll come down here and I'll auto set my finishers. And what I'm gonna do so that it's gonna be a little bit easier to see in the tool path, for just the example, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna increase this, which I wouldn't take the cut, but just for the purpose of seeing the tool path, I'm gonna make it a little bit larger. Let's come over here, do a program complete. Let's do a tool path, part shape. And now what we're gonna see is I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna do a path step. The tool comes over. Notice how I'm above my part here, over here. It's going to come down to a, a plane right above the part. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna helical down to get down to my depth of negative 480. From here, what you're gonna notice is that you're gonna see some spiral tool path. Okay, I'm trying to go slow enough that you see how as it's cutting around, the radius of cut is getting larger. That is the spiral tool path. I'm gonna go ahead and hit path continue, let it finish, okay? So there you can see that it took, it was easy to see. I'm gonna go back to the program just to show you how easy it is to edit the width of cut. Let's go back to program edit. Where I did that 200 thousandths, I'm gonna go back to that 35 thousandths, okay? and I'm going to reset my auto approaches. Far right arrow key, program complete, tool path, part shape, and now I'm gonna hit path step, and you're gonna notice as it cuts, 
and I'm going to let it go now, you're going to notice, look at how much toolpath I get, and you can see that the segment between each line is that 35 thousandths. So again, all I had to change from in the program was that with R. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to call up a, my second example. I'm going to come over here to work number. I'm going to scroll through my programs and I'm going to come to IPM example number two. In this case, what you're going to see is I have that rectangular pocket. I have it with the uh, IPM, let's go program edit, cursor on the type. And again, I chose the IPM counterclockwise, helical entrance, and pretty much all the same information. And again, for the first test cut, I'm going to put that as 0.2. Auto set my approach points. And let's go ahead and take a look at the toolpath. Far right arrow key, program complete. Toolpath, part shape. And I'll go ahead and do the path step. And you'll see, you'll notice that it first starts off with the spiral toolpath. And it's going to cut as much as it can with the spiral. But once I come down into the corners, it will start working in the corners, taking out just the corners. It'll be a little bit more evident when I switch it back to the uh, 35 thousandths. So let's come back here. We're going to go ahead and switch it. I'm going to go back to program edit, auto set the approach, change the width R. I'm going to put it back to my 7% of my cut at 35 thousandths. Program complete, toolpath, part shape, and path step. So again, you're going to see the, it works its way out. And then once it gets to a point where I get to the corner, I'm going to do path erase right here for a second, or uh, yeah, path erase, and I'm going to do a path step. And what you're going to notice is that it cuts around and it comes back and it works on cutting out the corner. I'm going to go ahead and do a finish and you can see how that works its way getting back into the corner. These tool paths will reduce your cycle time quite a bit. And the nice thing about high speed machining is that you can take your depth of cut probably where they recommend where you start at is maybe like 1.25 times your uh, diameter for the depth. And they'll take it up to, let's say, three times the depth of the flute or the depth of the diameter. But again, just that short radial cut that between 5 and 10%. And like I said, I did the uh, 7%. I hope today's Mazak Minute was very informative. IPM is a very powerful way of making faster tool path or making your part faster, quicker, and having a longer tool life. Thanks for watching the Mazak Minute. We'll see you next time. If you have any comments or uh, future topics you'd like me to cover, put them on the comments down below. Thanks.